Hello guys, Moritz here and in this video I want to show you how I made my own plant monitoring system. This video is sponsored by Seed. Seed is the IoT hardware enabler providing services over 10 years that empower makers to realize their projects and products. Seed offers a wide array of hardware platforms and sensor modules ready to be integrated with existing IoT platforms and one-stop PCB manufacturing and prototype PCB assembly. Seed Studio provides a wide selection of electronic parts including Arduino, Raspberry Pi and many different development board platforms. Especially the growth system help engineers and makers to avoid jumper wire problems. Seed Studio has developed more than 280 growth modules covering a wide range of applications that can fulfill a variety of needs. Get an additional $10 discount when buying growth products for orders over $50 with the code GROWTH10. More about this in the video description. Since I didn't always feel like looking whether I had to water my plants or not, and since this task is sometimes quickly forgotten, I decided to develop my own system, which on the one hand measures the soil moisture of the plants and on the other hand displays this data clearly and tells me at a glance whether and which plants I have to water. To measure the soil moisture, I use growth soil moisture sensors from Seed Studio. These come with a cable and a small card with information about the sensor. These are capacitive sensors, which function very simple. The sensor is stuck in the soil and forms a capacitor with it, where the soil is the dielectric. Adding water changes the dielectric constant of the soil and thus the capacitance of the capacitor. This capacitance is measured by the sensor and returned as an analog value in the form of a voltage, which can be measured with a microcontroller. This type of sensor has the advantage over resistive sensors that they do not destroy themselves by electrolysis and therefore do not contaminate the soil with reaction products, but that is by the way. Since water can still penetrate into the material of the capacitive sensors, I seal them with two component adhesive. For this purpose I generously coat the edges of the sensor with the adhesive and let it harden. Afterwards, I printed a small housing for the sensors so that they are protected against splashing water. Since I applied the glue a little thick at the upper part of the sensors, I have to file it off a little bit with a file. After that, the housings fit and look great. For reading the sensors, I use an ESP8266. Because it has only one analog input, I use an additional ADS1115 analog to digital converter, which has four more inputs. With this, I can read out five sensors in total. Because the cables of the sensor are a bit short and I plan to use other connectors, I extend them. Therefore, I cut three conductors of equal length, which I fix at one end and then twist them with a hook on a drill. Then I solder the cable to the cable supplied with the sensor and connect the other end to a JST connector. So that I can easily connect and disconnect the sensors to the ESP later, I solder the ESP, the converter and a few JST connectors to a perf board. Put that in the case that I 3D printed earlier and the sensor module is ready. The circuit diagram and the 3D model can be found in the video description. Only the code for the sensor module is missing. I have built the code in such a way that you can use 1 to 5 sensors with the ESP. To do this, you simply select the input to which your sensor is connected and which unique identifier the plant has in the database. Yes, you have heard correctly, database. Because the sensor module transfers the sensor data via wireless LAN directly into a database in the network. You can find instructions on how to set up this database in the video description. Or if you want, I can make another video just about that. Just tell me in the comments. The only thing missing now is the user interface, which shows the collected data. But more about that in the next video. If you like the video, leave a fat like and subscribe to the channel, because 95% of you still haven't done so. And write in the comments what you would like to see on my channel in the future. So, until the next video. Bye!